Buddha taught people many important things about staying healthy and happy. He said our bodies are like precious gifts and we should take care of them. Buddha also told us not to worry too much about what happened in the past or what might happen in the future. Instead, he said we should focus on being truthful and good in the present moment. But sometimes it's hard for us to do that. We get stuck thinking about things that happened before or we get scared about what's coming next. It's like we're trapped in a maze of thoughts and feelings that stop us from enjoying life right now. We worry about mistakes we made in the past and what might go wrong in the future. It's tough to break free from those worries and just live in the moment. But there's good news. Buddha showed us a way out of this cycle of worry and fear. Oh great, so are you ready? But before continue, subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. Watch complete video and give your suggestion in comments box. He said, if we concentrate on what's happening right now, we'll find peace and happiness. When we stop dwelling on the past or stressing about the future, we can finally feel free. Living in the present isn't just about existing. It's about really experiencing life to the fullest. Every breath we take is a chance to feel joy and contentment if we only pay attention. Buddha's teachings remind us of a story about a man named Rohan. Rohan was feeling very sad and lost, sitting alone on a mountain. Then, a kind monk came along and talked to him. The monk listened to Rohan's troubles without judging him. He shared Buddha's wisdom with Rohan, showing him a new way to look at life. Rohan had a question for the monk. He wondered why it mattered to anyone else if he felt like giving up on life. But the monk explained that we're all connected, like threads in a tapestry. Our actions affect not just ourselves, but everyone around us. With the monk's words in his heart, Rohan began to see things differently. He realized that true freedom comes from understanding our connections to others. Instead of being trapped in his own sadness, he found peace by reaching out and understanding his place in the world. So my friend, let's remember Buddha's teachings and try to live each day with purpose and kindness. In the quiet moments of the present, we can discover the magic of being alive and the endless possibilities that Leah heed on our journey through life. The Buddhist monk said to Rohan, if you're still hesitating to take action, then what good does it do to cry here? Hearing this, Rohan became furious and retorted, Look, respected monk, whatever I came here to do, I will do it. But there is no need for your interference. Saying this, Rohan started crying uncontrollably. Then the Buddhist monk asked Rohan, All right, tell me, have you left everything behind? Have you brought anything with you? In response, Rohan said, I have left everything behind. I have nothing. And what will I do by living if I have anything to lose? Hearing this, the Buddhist monk said to Rohan, If that's the case, why are you carrying this burden on your head? Surprised by the monk's words, Rohan asked, What burden am I carrying? My hands are empty and I don't have anything. That's when the Buddhist monk said, Even your breath is not flowing properly. You have come here to leave this world and cry your heart out. A person with nothing to lose never does such things. Upon hearing this, Rohan became even more enraged and demanded an explanation from the Buddhist monk. What do you mean by that? He asked. The monk replied, Have you ever attempted to look within yourself? How much burden have you been carrying? How heavy is the weight on your shoulders? How long do you plan on carrying these burdens? Unload them here and lighten your load. How long will you allow yourself to be trapped under these burdens? As soon as Rohan heard all these words from the Buddhist monk, he immediately fell at his feet and joined his hands, saying, Buddhist monk, nobody has ever understood me until now. Many people have come and gone from here, but no one has ever said these things to me. You have read my mind to the extent that even my family couldn't understand me, but you understood me completely in one go. 
Rohan proceeded to ask the Buddhist monk for help, saying, can you solve my problem? The monk responded, where is the problem? Rohan insisted, it's at my home. However, the monk clarified, the problem is not at your home. Rohan persisted, no, no, Buddhist monk, the problem is at my home. Come with me once and see. While explaining to Rohan, the Buddhist monk said, the problem is not at your home, but within you. Have you ever looked within yourself? All the problems are within you. Until you solve them, you will only see problems everywhere all the time. And if the problem is at home, what are you doing on top of this mountain? The Buddhist monk asked Rohan. You were saying that you have left everything behind, your own home, your family, your close relatives. And if you have left all these things behind, your problem has also disappeared there. So why are you so troubled? Hearing all these things from the Buddhist monk, Rohan said, Monk, you are right. I understand your words. The problem is within me. I am not capable of any work. Whenever I try to do something, I mess it up. Everything I touch turns into a mess. I have never done any work properly. My luck is just bad. Upon hearing these words, the monk started smiling and said to Rohan, well, it seems that you have bad luck. Tell me, what is wrong with your luck? Rohan replied to the Buddhist monk, I wanted to do business. For business, I needed money. So, I took some money from my family and started a business with that money. My business was growing well, but it didn't last long. In the beginning, my family supported me and everything was going well. But gradually, I started experiencing losses in my business, and seeing all this, my family became angry with me and distanced themselves from me. I wanted to do business and earn a good amount of money to take care of my family and provide them with all the comforts and conveniences they desired. I did everything for them, but those people couldn't understand me and blamed me for everything. I also feel like I made a mistake by starting the business with a friend. However, his business is doing very well. Whenever he comes to my house, he talks about how successful his business is and how he established and managed it on his own, taking it to great heights through hard work. Upon hearing all of this, my family started to tell me, look, son, he is a true friend. He has taken his business from one level to another, and you have caused us a loss of our invested capital. My family always tells me that I am incapable, and listening to these taunts causes me great distress. So, I took a loan and started a new business. However, even there, I faced setbacks, and my business ultimately failed. Now, my situation has come to the point. The Buddhist monk asked Rohan, Do you know why your friend used to come to you? Rohan responded, yes, I know very well. He used to come to belittle me in front of my family, criticize me, and show that he was much better than me in business. He wanted to make me feel inferior and sad by demonstrating his success. I felt tormented and troubled. The Buddhist monk then asked, did you truly feel sad when your friend succeeded in his business? Rohan responded, Yes, I felt sad when he succeeded in his business and mine failed. It hurt me, and I felt jealous. I regretted and suffered. The Buddhist monk said to Rohan, That means you would be happy if your friend also failed. If his business collapses, you would be pleased. The Buddhist monk smiled again and said to Rohan, This means your happiness depends on your friend. If he wants, he can make you happy. And if he wants, he can make you sad because you cannot be happy or sad on your own. You have already become a slave to your friend. And if that's the case, there is no solution to your problem because your happiness and the pain of your suffering depend on the behavior of others. Your actions have not changed anything for you. Neither can you be happy nor sad through your actions. I cannot provide a solution to your problem. Rohan said to the monk, Please don't say that, monk. I have a lot of hope for you because you are the one who understands and knows the pain inside me. You know it and you understand it. Please consider my request and give me a solution to this problem. 
The Buddhist monk replied, when we become dependent on others by attaching expectations to them, we completely rely on others. If I don't show you any path, then you will continue to be unhappy. You will keep crying like a sick person. But if I tell you a way, it may help you find a solution to your problem. However, remember one thing. The friend who came to your house and told you about how he has achieved growth in his business and how he has worked hard may make you feel sad, but he is telling the truth about how he struggled in his life to reach that position. He is sharing his experiences with you. The Buddhist monk continued to impart his wisdom, guiding Rohan towards a deeper understanding of his experiences and the lessons they held. Now you can either use that experience or let it go in vain and generate feelings of envy in your mind. He explained, his words carrying the weight of profound insight. Wisdom lies in utilizing experience by using your intelligence and the knowledge gained from experience. The monk continued, his voice resonating with quiet authority. You should be grateful for receiving the experience you need without even asking for it. Express gratitude to your friend for providing experiences and knowledge that you couldn't acquire from your own life. Rohan listened intently, absorbing the monk's words with a newfound sense of clarity and purpose. Move forward, face the struggles, the monk urged, his words infused with gentle encouragement. Use that experience and don't give up. One good thing about time is that it always changes, no matter how it is, the monk remarked, his tone contemplative. Therefore, whether the time is good or bad, it is certain to pass. But the most important thing to understand here is that you need to stay alive to witness these two times. Rohan nodded in understanding, his mind racing with newfound determination. Once you experience success, you will grow your business through the challenges and reach greater heights. The monk continued, his words resonating with quiet assurance. Then, your acquaintances will not share stories of their accomplishments, but instead recount their failures. To avoid making incorrect choices and prevent yourself from suffering the same fate, utilize your intelligence rather than relying on their words, the monk advised his voice imbued with wisdom born of experience, as they will not be seeking to make you happy, but rather to see you suffer. Hearing this, Rohan's eyes widened with realization. Oh, venerable, you are right, he acknowledged, his voice tinged with humility. I am not running my own life, but my relatives and friends are running it. They are filling my life with happiness and sorrow. But I have one question here, Rohan continued, his brow furrowed in thought. When I started my business, I intended to keep my family happy. I wanted to give them those comforts and joys. Is it wrong to think about my family? The monk's gaze softened, his expression gentle yet firm. It is not wrong to think about your family, he replied, his voice calm yet resolute. But it is important to recognize that true happiness lies not in the external trappings of success or wealth, but in the love and connection shared with those closest to you. As you navigate the challenges of life and business, remember to prioritize what truly matters, the well-being and happiness of your loved ones, the monk advised, his words carrying the weight of timeless wisdom. In doing so, you will find fulfillment and purpose beyond measure. With a grateful nod, Rohan absorbed the monk's words, his heart filled with newfound clarity and resolve. Armed with the wisdom gleaned from their exchange, he embarked on a journey of self-discovery and growth, guided by the timeless truths imparted by the venerable monk. As Rohan shared his struggles with the Buddhist monk, a sense of resignation hung heavy in the air. I was doing everything for my family, but after incurring losses in business, even my family left me, Rohan confessed, his voice tinged with bitterness and disappointment. Upon hearing this, the Buddhist monk's serene smile remained unwavering. What's there to smile about? Did I ask any wrong question? Rohan questioned, his frustration palpable. 
the monk's response was gentle yet profound, revealing a deeper truth that resonated with Rohan's innermost thoughts and emotions. Every person expects consolation when they make a mistake, and you desire the same as well, the monk explained, his words carrying the weight of universal truth. Everyone wants to be praised when they do something, and not receiving that praise hurts us deeply. It wounds our hearts. As the monk spoke, Rohan felt a stirring within him, a dawning realization of the underlying motivations driving his actions. This is when we start to think that everyone in this world is selfish, the monk continued, his wisdom cutting through the veil of disillusionment. Everyone works for their gains and interests, and everyone stays with us for their purposes. But if you consider someone as your family and want to do something for them, then why do you feel like you're doing it for others? The monk challenged gently, his words probing Rohan's deepest insecurities. You are doing it for yourself. If you think you're doing it for others, you will remain unhappy throughout your life. When you realize that you're doing it for yourself, you will experience a strange happiness, and you will always be content. Rohan listened intently, the monk's words sinking in and reshaping his perspective on life and relationships. And as long as you keep working on your tasks to make them better and excellent, you won't need anyone's consolation, the monk concluded, his voice filled with quiet assurance. Upon hearing this profound wisdom, Rohan felt a sense of clarity wash over him. Oh, monk, I understand your words now, he acknowledged, his tone tinged with gratitude. Until now, my fate was in the hands of others. They used to paint it with colors of happiness or sorrow as they wished. But since I will hold my destiny in my own hands, whether it's good or bad, I won't accept defeat. Finally, Rohan turned to the Buddhist monk with a renewed sense of determination. I understood all your words, but can you give me something that can support me during the worst times of my life? Something that can accompany me? He requested earnestly. In response, the Buddhist monk presented a small box to Rohan, its contents shrouded in mystery. It is very important to you and should be kept close the monk instructed solemnly. The box contains a secret that can alleviate the greatest sorrows and rescue you from the most severe calamities. Only open it in situations where you feel there is no way out and everything appears meaningless. With a sense of reverence, Rohan accepted the box, its weight heavy with promise and possibility. As the Buddhist monks departed, leaving Rohan with the precious gift, he felt a renewed sense of purpose and resolve coursing through his veins. Returning home with the box clutched tightly in his hands, Rohan embarked on a new chapter of his life with renewed determination. Starting a new business, he persevered through every challenge, drawing strength from the mysterious box and the wisdom imparted by the Buddhist monk. This time around, Rohan achieved great success, and as a result, his family returned to him, drawn by the magnetic force of his resilience and determination. Now, he enjoys all the comforts and pleasures of life, his past regrets and fears fading into insignificance. With a newfound sense of clarity and purpose, Rohan embraces each moment with gratitude and joy. Knowing that life's trials and tribulations are but fleeting moments in the grand tapestry of existence, as time marches on, he remains steadfast in his resolve, guided by the timeless wisdom of the Buddhist monk and the mysterious secret contained within the small box, a beacon of hope and resilience in the face of adversity. Once again, a good phase had come to an end in Rohan's life. The neighboring state had launched a devastating attack, leaving his homeland in ruins. His once thriving business lay in shambles, and he found himself facing unimaginable hardships alongside his family. Forced to flee from one place to another in search of safety, Rohan's resources dwindled until he couldn't even afford food and drink. Hunger gnawed at their stomachs, and despite his best efforts, 
Rohan watched helplessly as his parents succumbed to the harsh realities of their new existence. His wife and two young brothers fell ill, their health deteriorating with each passing day. As they wandered, homeless and destitute, Rohan's mind became consumed with questions about the purpose of life itself. The once vibrant world now seemed meaningless, and the advice of the Buddhist monk he had encountered felt equally hollow in the face of such profound suffering. Penniless and directionless, Rohan spiraled into despair, convinced that his life was devoid of meaning. The idea of striving for success felt empty and futile, and even the prospect of his own existence held little appeal. He regretted not having the bravery to make something of his life, feeling disappointed with every aspect of his existence. Lost in thought, Rohan's gaze fell upon the small box given to him by the Buddhist monk. Inside, he found a note bearing a simple yet profound message. Your life can change for the better at any moment. You may be rich or poor, but with courage, you can accomplish anything. Those words sparked a glimmer of hope within Rohan's heart, igniting a newfound sense of determination and resilience. With renewed courage, he resolved to embark on a new journey, determined to carve out a better future for himself and his loved ones. And so, Rohan began anew, facing each day with unwavering resolve and optimism. Though the road ahead was fraught with challenges, he refused to be daunted, drawing strength from the belief that with courage and perseverance, anything was possible. As we reach the end of this Zen journey, the Tranquility Insights team would like to express our deepest gratitude for your incredible support. We invite you to subscribe to our channel, share our message with friends, and leave your comments for us. Together, let us continue to seek wisdom and inspiration on the path to a brighter tomorrow.